Hey everyone, another presentation. What are you gonna do? We just had the Nintendo Direct, and now today we have the uh, PlayStation State of Play. I actually look forward to this. First of all, this waiting music is pretty freaking cool. I really like this waiting music at the countdown. I don't know when I upload this if that's gonna be attached to this or not. It's gonna depend how PlayStation decides to upload it afterwards. But I like this, it's kind of freaky. I like PlayStation. I like the PlayStation ecosphere. I like the systems. I like the UI. I like that games, they're exclusives. The one thing I don't like is PlayStation controllers. The DualShock 4 is the first controller I ever actually thought was comfortable. Starting at the PlayStation 1, hated that controller. PlayStation 2, I thought it was even worse. PlayStation 3 was getting closer, but it's still just as uncomfortable. The DualShock 4 is a really great controller. I absolutely love it. But I also, like I said, I like the PlayStation exclusives. Apart from maybe The Last of Us, it's, it's not for me. I played the first one and I just, I couldn't play it. It was so bad. I thought it was really annoying. I hated the controls. The stealth stuff didn't work. The shooting was bad. This, I don't know, it just wasn't for me, but I like PlayStation exclusives. I like things like Astro's Playroom, Ratchet and Clank, um, what else do we have? Uh, you know, the, 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 the cutesy stuff like Sackboy, I like that kind of stuff. PlayStation still dabbles in that stuff and I one of my wishes for today is that we get something like that, a game like that. Something cute, you know? And you have like bigger franchises too, Uncharted. I hope we get to see some Uncharted today. I really, really like the Uncharted franchise. I think it's a perfect adventure kind of game and I like the shooting, it's super addictive the shooting and another one, you know, for example, I expect we're gonna see God of War I like the old God of War games, I haven't tried the new one yet I expect Horizon Zero Dawn I played the first one a little bit, but that was at the same time Breath of the Wild launched and after playing Breath of the Wild, I could not play Horizon Zero Dawn anymore. I just couldn't. The fact that the character couldn't even step on a tiny little knee-high rock, it bothered me. There was just no freedom. So I have to play that again at some point. And one of my personal favorites, Days Gone, which became one of my top 20 favorite games ever. That's how much I love that game. And now that Days Gone is going to PC, you know, there's hope things are opening up personally i like the fact when you keep exclusives but i've been hoping and my secret wish for today is days gone too when it comes to the story it's inevitable that there should be a days gone too if you play the game it ends perfectly but it sets up more and i hope that is something we have to see today at like five four three two one let's go That looks like the console itself. There's some very unexpected developments in the future. Shocking events that will change the course I don't like of your crash. life. <laughs> that last part might have been a hair dramatic, but there's lots of awesome updates in addition. Okay, so this crash for I hate Crash Bandicoot. That's actually one of the cute, more cute explanations that I don't like. Everyone. Platformer should not go forwards and backwards. It just that's why I can't stand Crash. Now, four has a lot of side crawly stuff, but most of it is still going towards and away from the screen. And oh, I hate that so much. I never liked Crash. Crash Bandicoot Four. It's about time we find the evil masterminds Neo Cortex and Doctor Entropy escaping a one spot inescapable interdimensional. That totally doesn't look like Ratchet and Clank's portal stuff at all. Follows is a mind-bending adventure for Crash and his marsupial pals. We designed Crash Bandicoot This is a boring trailer. Screen, brimming with bold, vibrant environments and characters. I like the design of the character of Crash. I really do, but I can't play. I, I, I like 
platformer that goes away into towards the screen. No game should ever have a section where you're running towards the screen. Uncharted does it a few times, and I hate that. So you can feel the blast of Neocortex's DNA changing ray gun. Or feel the grip. His voice is so boring. Hold on tight when you feel the boost of Crash's jet board, and really feel the suck when you vacuum as Dingo Dot. Looking to get fully immersed in the Crash Bandicoot I know, Crash works better as a 3D game for me. Just, there's too much wackness when you walk towards the screen, too much cheapness. But should our genetically mutated I've heard there's about 10 games in this presentation cards to track your progress and hit your goals for things like time trials flashback levels and boss fights I bet entropy would ah, this trailer is boring even bring your incomplete save over from the PlayStation 4 and use the activity cards to get to 106 percent oh and one more thing if you own the ps4 version of the game an upgrade option is available check out the PlayStation blog for full details whether it's your first playthrough or your hundredth there's no better time to experience Crash Bandicoot 4 it's about time on PlayStation 5. Hey, it releases on my birthday. Welcome back, Crash. The game's still back. Today's new edition of State of Play. We've got some great updates lined up for you. First, let's check out the latest on an eagerly anticipated game coming to the PS5 console this spring from PlayStation Studios. Hey, everyone. We at Housemark are excited to give you this. Hey, everyone. At return. In Returnal, you will play a yeah, I thought it was going to be Returnal. I'm actually interested in Returnal. I don't have a PlayStation 5, so I won't be able to play it, but I like the look of the game a lot. It has this, like, alien vibe and this, like, kind of time travel story to it. It's a very good-looking game, design-wise. Oh, it plays a lot faster than what they originally showed. I like that. Gee, this looks fun. This looks incredible. I really like this. It looks really good. Vast number of unique movesets each possess. Combat situations prove challenging no matter what the circumstances are. Death is only the beginning. Every time you die and restart, the world will change. The map will be different. Enemies will appear in new locations and in differing numbers, so you have to think fast. I was afraid of that, because basically that makes it a rogue game. Now, I like rogue games, but I've never before seen a rogue game. Like, triple A rogue, it's really strange. A lot of people don't appreciate the style of rogue games, but I enjoy that. Things like Rogue Legacy, for example, and the one that they just released um, for Bastion people. Hades. Like, I love that kind of shit, but it's interesting in this style. I really like the alien vibe of this. As they venture deeper and deeper it has some Metroid vibes to it too, I feel. And I don't say that like loosely. That can't be here. I think I am reliving my memories in that house that not not honestly not too big of a fan of that actress though. Even the UI, I love how it just looks very alien. That's the biggest attraction for me. Interesting, one of it means it's gonna, it's gonna switch to first person for those kind of scenes. Oh, that was just a cutscene thing. On April 30th, and it's developed by the talented team at Housemark. April 30th? That's pretty soon. 
Next, let's take a closer look at a high impact new PS4 oh, game. Oh man, do we have to see that? That's a stupid ball game that we saw during the, the Nintendo Direct as well. It just. I'm sorry, a lot of people are hyped for this, it just it feels too empty. I'm just tired of those like arena style games in the end. No way really care. Like Ninjala, who cares? Who actually really cares? Like I don't know, if this is free, I might try it, but I have a feeling I would get bored so fast of this. There's a lot of stuff here for those who've got the skills. In our 1v1 face-off mode, you'll go head to head in a constantly shrinking battleground, relying on your reflexes and abilities to knock out an opponent. A well-timed catch powers up the ball, making it easier to land a hit. I mean, in the end, it's just a disguised shooter, right? To lob a ball like an arena-type shooter, and I just corner. don't really care. Fake a throw to find in our upcoming crossplay day. Like good time with some tea. This match is the sniper ball, which locks onto targets from far. I don't have much to say about this. Like you can take them out before they just react. I just don't care. Beyond special balls. Each map features a unique mechanic. I have way too much to play already. To make a quick getaway or use them to Nothing taken into account big releases that are still coming. Caught empty hands. To just you can literally put more time like an arena star here. No way. Or risk it all. Charge up a team. It also looks very I'm not like it looks very boring. Like it, it looks like there's not a lot of variety to this at all. The team here at Bellin has been obsessed with building this world over also the like four years. Also, like, ugly character Knock design. I'm, so, I'm sorry to harp on this. It's, it's just not for me, this. Rally your crew. Here's your first look at an upcoming PS5 game from the team at Slow Clap. I already stole the Days Gone logo, guys. <laughs> I mean, PlayStation 5, this looks kind of cheap. That's some old boy level shit, that's pretty cool. Wait, didn't they show this game before? I'm thinking of something else. That fighting looks actually really satisfying in the combat. Well, I look pretty with the grass. I'm actually starting to dig this style. Sifu. I'm digging this. I'm digging this. Oh, it's coming to PlayStation 4 as well. Good. I might pick that up. That looks really addictive, actually, to find it. They showed that before as well. I think I liked what I saw from that. Oh yeah, it's uh, the Faye kind of game. The art style looks a lot like Faye. has a lot of Fae to it. I don't remember what studio did Fae. Oh, I really like that, the maneuverability and everything. It seems very addictive somehow. And that style with that speed. Definitely interested in this. As you journey to save your planet, you'll find yourself face to face with grotesque and violent creatures. See, this is how a Sonic game should play like fast, 
No, stop. You're not being stopped by spikes every few steps or walls. You just keep moving, keep bouncing, keep running with some combat scenes that don't really um, segment the, the racing parts itself. We've been able to bring our characters to life like never before. In true Oddworld fashion, your actions in-game will decide the fate of Abe and all those you managed to liberate along the way. And we can't wait to see what you will do. Okay, I like Abe, I like the original game. I played the original game, not many after. I like those worlds, I like everything. But we've already seen this several times. I feel like a lot of the things that are showing today, we've already seen them. There's not a lot of new stuff so far. We'll get the PS5 version for no extra cost starting in April. PS5 version for no extra cost starting in April. Moving on. It's time to Oh, they're showing Kina. A gorgeous new adventure we last saw on the June PS5 showcase. I forgot to say this in the beginning. I legit believe we would not see this game right now. I can't wait for this. Just so cute, the rot. People have been harassing Amberlabs way too much over this game. I really hope it lives up to the hype. Usually timid. I love the atmosphere of it, and it's so beautiful. Hello, spirit. I seek passage to the sacred mountain shrine. Our village is bound to the shrines of the two. But that power fades long ago. I wonder if they're gonna give us a release date. This looks like really old school GameCube era combat. I'm so excited for this with the, the visuals and everything. I mean, look at it. Tangled in the tragedies of our past. You must help the character design is just perfect. Love that slow motion stuff. And it's so gorgeous the game. I have a feeling the story is gonna be really intense as well. August. Nice. It's pretty late, but I was kind of expecting a late release for Kina. What's the time loop? The, the, the game with the assassins called in a time loop? See, again, it's like. I'm excited for this game. I'm pretty excited. Oh, death loop, that's what it is. I was excited for this. I like the idea behind it. The, um, the gameplay looks fun. I like the story and all that stuff. But again, we've already seen enough of this game at this point. It's 
so far, and just everything like this. Kina, apart from Kina's release date, I guess. The ape stuff, uh, everything. We've already seen almost everything. It's just new footage of all the nouns stuff. Like even Death Loop, we've seen enough of this already at this point. I really like that 50s James Bond style stuff. I really like the idea behind this, uh, the gameplay and the story of it. I'm very excited for this one, I really am. But like, you know, we've already seen enough of this. Before we leave, how about a huge update for one of 2020's most celebrated games? See, it's like, man, fucking Final Fantasy, come on! Final Fantasy 7, part 2 of 10. Or DLC for the first one. That would be hilarious. If the first game would get DLC. to get excited for Final Fantasy 7. First of all, Final Fantasy 7 is my least favorite Final Fantasy. But second, it's like, I played the demo of this before it came out. I was like, you know, maybe I'll play it. And then you get these four segments where you have to play as Barrett, and they're like the most annoying segments ever. Then he changes all the story just to shoehorn in the several stuff in the first game. And it's like, I just, I just can't care. You can look as good as you want, if I already don't care about Final Fantasy VII, the last thing you have to do is make it even more annoying. This really, this is so gonna be just DLC. And got like a new story arc maybe, and like a few extra playable characters. Graphics on PlayStation 5, like, okay. Wait, there's one on the right PlayStation 4? That looks better. And you show in comparison that changes borderline nothing. Like, what's the point? Okay, you added lighting in a scene. That's nothing the PlayStation 4 couldn't have had. That all looks exactly the same! The, four, the PlayStation 4 one looked better with the orange lighting in the background. That is adding fog on the PlayStation 5 and the Terminator just loves this fog. Kind of okay, the, the left one is a little bit lighter there. It's like... They're showing this like it's a massive improvement, but it's not. And half the time the PlayStation 4 version looks better! So you're doing this cool screen wipe, it looks the same! <laughs> Come on! Quality of life, the game came out like a year ago. Because that's what we needed, like already a remaster of the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Part 1 out of 10, you know, you don't waste your time on remastering something that still has like, who knows how many games left in the series. I don't see the point of this. I 
to see it's really just like a new episode thing on the first game. It's really all it is. To just save it for the next game. It's like they're really trying to milk. It's just a standard Final Fantasy VII milk train. That's all it is. It's like I couldn't care less. That was the reveal of Final Fantasy VII Remake Integrate coming to the PS5 console later this year. And that's our show. That was your final. As excited as we are for what's to come in 2021. See you next time. Okay, look. This was bad. This was this was a bad state of play. I feel the only thing we got out of this was a release date for Kina. That's it. We saw Abe already. We saw stuff from Kina already. We saw Deathloop already. We saw like the the crash already. We know what Final Fantasy VII is. What was the point of this? I don't. I don't. Uh... I don't know what the point was of this. There was no really cool new reveal of anything. Anything. You get like a remaster of a partial remake of an episodic game that with new DLC on it. It's like, did, did Final Fantasy VII need that? You know you're already gonna make more games for Final Fantasy. Did you need to milk it that bad that quick? It's it's an it's an insult. It's an absolute insult. Okay, well, let me know what you guys thought of this. Did you enjoy the state of play? Some people were hoping it would be better than the Nintendo Direct, and even with all my thoughts about the Nintendo Direct, that Nintendo Direct was a lot better because at least you got Mario Golf. That's already one new game. <laughs> you know, you got Mario Golf, you got Splatoon three. And you got like a Smash character reveal, okay? So we can make the equivalent of a Smash character reveal to the Final Fantasy VII extra shit. Boom, that's it. Nothing else. The only new piece of info here really was the release date of Kina. That's it. Let me know what you guys thought. Did you think this was a good state of play? Did you enjoy it? Did you like any of the new reveals? It's like, there was nothing new here. I thought it was very strange to make a state of play. It was basically just to remind you, like, look, we have shit coming to the PS5. That's, that's all this was. And nothing of it was really grand. I wasn't even asking for much. Just I don't, one thing, I don't know. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know your comments. If you enjoyed this reaction, consider subscribing to my channel. I'm full on gaming now. I do reaction videos, gameplay videos. I have a lot of new ideas of things to come. It's gonna be a good year for my channel, I feel. At the very least, when it comes to content, because I keep pumping it out and having a lot of fun with the dedicated gaming channel now. Stay real.